Imagine this, a young man, the next day after his hair transplant, standing in front of a mirror, marveling at the rejuvenated hairline, though the result has not yet appeared. And he thinks the battle of baldness is won. And just prior to the procedure, he was thoroughly counseled on the importance of continuing medication, especially oral finasteride after the procedure to maintain his native thinning hair. Yet post-surgery, he embarks upon a quest through the aisles of health stores, seeking solace in pumpkin seeds and saw palmetto. Convinced now that these natural DHT blockers will suffice. And this is akin to replacing a seasoned bodyguard with a friendly neighborhood watchman, well-intentioned but ill-equipped for the task at hand. This phenomenon where patients abandon proven medical advice in favor of less effective natural alternatives, so-called alternatives, is both perplexing and disconcerting. In the realm of androgenic alopecia, the quest for alternatives to oral finasteride has garnered significant attention. What with all the media hype, with all these companies producing so many natural DHT blockers and heavily marketing them. And patients with hair loss, as we all know, are a gullible lot. While finasteride remains a cornerstone treatment, due to its robust efficacy in inhibiting 5-alpha reductase, which prevents the synthesis of DHT, concerns about potential side effects have led some patients to explore natural DHT blockers. Now, what are these natural DHT blockers that people often talk about? Number one is saw palmetto. This botanical extract is said to inhibit 5-alpha reductase, thereby reducing DHT synthesis. While some studies suggest its potential in mitigating hair loss, its efficacy is significantly much, much less than that of oral finasteride, a pharmacological grade DHT blocker. And then we go on to pumpkin seed oil, rich in phytosterols, particularly beta cytosterol. Pumpkin seed oil may inhibit DHT production. A study indicated a 40% increase in hair count in patients using pumpkin seed oil supplements. And then we have green tea, which contains epigallocatechin gallate, in short EGCG, an antioxidant that may inhibit 5-alpha reductase and thereby reduce DHT levels. And then we have PGM africanum, an extract from the African tree bark that has demonstrated anti-androgen properties potentially reducing DHT levels as usual. And then nettle root, traditionally used for its anti-inflammatory properties. Nettle root also inhibits 5-alpha reductase. And then reishi mushroom, which contains compounds that may suppress DHT production, though human studies are limited. And then curcumin, an extract of turmeric, also with anti-inflammatory properties and properties of 5-alpha reductase suppression. And then caffeine, topical caffeine, zinc supplements, and licorice root. But is their use in clinical practice relevant in treating androgenic alopecia, especially aggressive androgenic alopecia in a patient who is young and who has a strong family history? Can he take these natural supplements, which are said to be alternatives to oral finasteride? Let's discuss this. While these natural supplements offer a gentler approach to DHT suppression, their efficacy pales in comparison to oral finasteride. In clinical practice, patients who opt for natural alternatives often experience variable results. Some may observe a temporary stabilization or modest improvement in hair density, but the progressive nature of androgenic alopecia typically resumes over time. So it's a short-lived respite from androgenic alopecia. Therefore, it is imperative to counsel the patients that relying solely on these natural DHT blockers is akin to bringing a knife to a gunfight. However, for those who are unable to take finasteride due to various reasons, a comprehensive approach is advised and this includes lifestyle modifications, sometimes topical treatments in patients whose hair loss is more or less stabilized, the gene is switching off, and close monitoring by an expert doctor. However, expectations from natural DHT blockers should be tempered, understanding that these alternatives may not halt the progression of male pattern baldness. The efficacy of these natural alternatives does not in any way, by any stretch of imagination, even slightly match that of pharmacological grade DHT blockers like finasteride. Finasteride has been shown to reduce DHT levels by up to 70% in a consistent manner, case after case, with clinical studies indicating a success rate of up to 85%. In contrast, the DHT blocking capabilities of these natural supplements is rather modest and the supporting evidence is lacking. And whatever studies have been carried out are not without conflict of interest. While some patients do report good outcomes from use of natural DHT blockers, these instances are exceptions rather than the norm because the progression of baldness in androgenic alopecia, especially when you're starting at a young age, is relentless. And without effective, timely intervention, 
Native hair is likely to continue thin over time, sometimes dramatically. And if you haven't seized the opportunity of starting a reliable DHT blocker at the right time, all will be lost. So it is crucial to counsel the patients about the limitations of natural DHT blockers, especially if they are going in for a hair transplant, because use of natural DHT blockers, not using oral finasteride, is non-negotiable. Always go in for evidence-based treatment. But then you may ask that my cousin or my friend, my colleague, got a hair transplant done. The doctor did not advise him any medical treatment, but he's got a very great result. But you haven't washed him over the next one year after a hair transplant. There are several celebrities touted as having had a lush growth, but watch them over the next one or two years. Even the clinic that has done these celebrities will stop showcasing their results after one year is over. If you have a keen eye, go and research this out yourself. Patients who do not take finasteride but still have good results are outliers because they benefit from several other factors which are ambiguous. And these factors are that they skip finasteride and still get a good result because their baldness is non-progressive. It is more or less stabilized. Or they have an excellent donor area. No miniaturization at all. So when you select the follicles for hair transplant, you are only selecting the most robust follicles which have the maximum potential for growth. And these are real permanent hair. They will not be affected by DHT. Or the doctor has done strict graft selection. Cherry picking of grafts. Those grafts which are in the prime of their anagen phase have the maximum potential for hair growth. However, these factors do not apply to most patients. For the majority of men facing hair loss, especially when you start young, extensive grades of baldness, strong family history, skipping finasteride is a gamble. Russian roulette. Finasteride is the safety net that ensures that your hair remain intact, preventing a scenario where you get a hair transplant only to lose more surrounding hair and end up with an unnatural look over the years. If your friend got a hair transplant without finasteride, he is only lucky. Relying on luck alone when you're undergoing a transformative, life-changing procedure, a once-in-a-lifetime procedure in the background of grafts which are not limitless is a bad strategy. A hair transplant is a one-time opportunity to reset your appearance and confidence. Unlike a haircut, you don't have a second chance. Once your donor hair are utilized, depleted, donor hair, if wasted, do not regenerate. This means that every follicle must be used wisely with a long-term plan in mind. Without finasteride, many patients find that while their transplanted hair remains, the surrounding hair has slowly, gradually thinned out over time, even taking away from the effect, the initial effect they got in the first six months, one year after hair transplant. And this leads to patchy, unnatural appearance that often requires subsequent sessions over the next, as soon as two to four years. And sometimes it's just not possible to have another session because your donor area has been depleted. People avoid finasteride because of the fear of side effects, chiefly among which is sexual side effect and something that I hear from patients all too often. The internet is flooded with horror stories about this medication, but the truth is far less dramatic. When taken under expert supervision, finasteride is a safe and effective treatment against androgenic alopecia. But your doctor must exercise due diligence before prescription. A proper medical evaluation, including lab tests, hormonal checkup, should be done before prescribing this drug. This drug is not for everybody. Deep counseling is an absolute must. Proper counseling helps patients understand what to expect. Many side effects such as decreased libido are reversible and occur in a very small percentage of patients, less than 1% of patients who have normal biochemical parameters. Understanding this itself can alleviate a lot of fears. And then the one month trial. If you're hesitant, why not go on a trial? Try the drug for 30 days and see whether it suits your body. This period of one month, 30 days, allows you to assess how your body reacts to oral finasteride. If you experience side effects, you're most welcome to discontinue it. And these side effects will go away in 30 to 45 days. So to end, anecdotes should not replace medical advice. If you're considering a hair transplant, do it right. Follow the protocol, follow signs, but use finasteride under medical supervision. Take the one month trial if you're still hesitant. Understand that this is your best chance at not only achieving great results, but also maintaining these results for a long period of time. Like in these patients who have undergone hair transplant and have had results, maintained their results over 15 to 20 years. Skipping finasteride is not a calculated risk. It is a foolhardy, reckless decision. And with something as precious as your hair, why take chances? So let me know if you have any questions about this topic. I'll be happy to answer them. Leave a comment in the comment section below. For those who haven't subscribed yet, please do. Your encouragement keeps the channel going. Have a nice day and God bless you.